In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Identity and Access Manager when you're connecting to an existing LDAP server. Now, if you're not familiar with Identity and Access Manager, or IAM, this is a feature that was introduced in 10.4 that manages authentication for all dev test components, including Enterprise Dashboard and each registry in your environment. Because it's responsible for managing authentication, that means it also needs to be the first component that you start up. So you can't access Enterprise Dashboard or an individual registry unless IAM is up and running first. So let's go ahead and take a look at this feature. So to start IAM, I can either use the desktop icon or I can navigate to the dev test installation directory, open the identity access manager folder, and then the bin folder where I find the executable for IAM. If you're on a Windows machine, you can also launch it from the start menu. And once IAM is up, I can then launch the UI. And again, I can use the desktop icon or the Windows Start menu. I can also just open a browser and enter the URL directly. And the default URL is localhost 51111, though that might be different for you based on where it's installed. So once that's up and running, I'm ready to log in. So I just enter my username and my password and click login. And once you log in, IAM opens up to the General tab, and it's worth noting here that this tab includes a link to the dev test documentation that takes you directly to the product documentation that's related to IAM. For this video, we're using IAM with an LDAP server. So the first thing I need to do is to configure my connection to my LDAP server. To do that, I go to User Federation under the Configure menu. Now I can configure this connection in a couple of ways. To set this up manually, I just click Add Provider and select LDAP. And here you can enter all of your LDAP information. A couple of quick things to note on this page, required fields are indicated with a red asterisk. And if you have any questions about any of the fields, each field has a help icon that provides more information. You can also test your connection and authentication before you finish up and click Save at the bottom of the page. I'll also note that there's a Kerberos integration section at the bottom of this page, and this section is only used if you're enabling the auto login feature. If you are using auto login, you're also going to need to make some changes to your authentication settings and to your client settings. And these features are all directly related to the auto login feature that was introduced in DevTest 10.5, and I'm not going to go into that in this video. But if you're interested, you can find detailed information in the dev test documentation by searching for Enable Auto Login. And remember that you can get to the documentation from the General tab. So that's setting up your LDAP configuration manually. The other way to do this is by importing an existing XML file that contains the details of your LDAP authentication provider. If you happen to be upgrading from a previous version of DevTest, Identity and Access Manager automatically imports this information for you the first time that you start a registry. For this automatic import to work, you must have a valid authentication providers.xml file in your install directory. To demonstrate this process, I'm going to do the import manually, but as long as these files are present in your install directory, IAM will do this step for you. So to do this manually, I just go back to the User Federation page, and click Import LDAP Authentication. If you're upgrading from a previous version of DevTest, the two files listed here should be in the installation directory of your previous version. If you did an in-place upgrade where you overwrote your previous version, these files should be in your install directory. The Authentication Providers file stores the details for your LDAP authentication provider, and the LDAP mappings assigns DevTest roles to existing LDAP groups. I'm going to go ahead and import my LDAP files, so I can select my Authentication Providers file. And then my LDAP Mappings file. And click Import. Now back in the User Federation page, you can see that my LDAP information is showing up. And if I ever need to edit this for any reason, I can click Edit in the Actions column to make changes. And on the Group Settings tab, you can define the specific LDAP groups that you want to pull into IAM and all of the relevant details for that. 
The Mappers tab provides a set of default attributes that you can map to your LDAP attributes. For example, if your LDAP attribute for username is not the default CN, you can map the username LDAP attribute to the username attribute in IAM. You can also assign dev test roles to LDAP groups, but that is in another section of the UI and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and take a look at our users. So to do that, I select Users under the Manage menu. The first thing you'll notice is that on the initial view of this page, no users show up, so I have to click View All Users. And now you might notice that the only users that are showing up are the default users for DevTest Solutions. And that might seem odd, but it's important to note that this page does not show all users in your LDAP server. When a user logs into DevTest, a record gets written into the IAM database, and then the user shows up in IAM. But until the user logs in for the first time, you won't see them in this list. If you want to see the details for a particular user, you can click the ID for the user or click Edit in the Actions column. From the Details tab, you can edit the details for a given user. You can also use the Credentials tab to change a password. However, and this is important, any changes that you make in these two tabs are not written back to the LDAP server and don't actually impact the user's authentication because the user is authenticated against the LDAP server. So you should really only use these tabs to review a user's information and then make your changes in LDAP. However, you can use the Role Mappings tab to assign roles to the selected user. And to do that, you can select an available role and click Add Selected to assign it to this user. And it's worth noting that the Effective Roles list shows the roles that the user has inherited from mapped roles or groups. From the Sessions tab, you can also see the active sessions for this user. As an administrator, you also have the ability to automatically log this user out of all sessions. A couple of other things worth pointing out back on my list of users. There's also an Unlock Users button that unlocks any user whose accounts were temporarily locked, typically from too many unsuccessful login attempts. There's also a search feature to make it easier to find a specific user. So that's users. Now let's talk about creating and managing the roles that you can then assign to users. If you click Roles under the Configure menu, the Roles page opens up and shows you a list of defined roles. Just like your list of users, you can edit or delete existing roles. And to add a new role, I just click Add Role. And then I can enter a name and a description for the role and click Save. And you can see that my new role is listed here. And I can now map this role to a specific LDAP group. To do that, I'm going to click Groups. And here you can see all of the user groups that are defined. And from here, I can click the Groups to Role Mapping tab. And then I can select an LDAP group. In this case, I only have the one. And you can see that my new role is now in the list of available roles. And I can assign that role to this group. Now, you might have noticed that I created the role, but it didn't let me assign any permissions to this role. And this is another very important point. Identity and Access Manager lets you control the authentication for all of DevTest, but authorization is still handled through DevTest Portal. What that means is that you can add, edit, and delete roles in IAM, but the permissions for those roles are assigned through Portal. This provides the flexibility of defining different permissions for a role in different registries. So let's go ahead and open up the portal to see what this looks like. In the portal, I can select Settings, Access Control, and then Roles. And here you can see that the new role that I just created is showing up. Now if I select New Role, you can also see that there are no assigned permissions for this role. On the left, you can see the available permissions. So I can define the permissions for this role by selecting a permission on the left and moving it to the list of assigned permissions on the right. I can also get more granular by expanding a particular permission and assigning a subset of permissions. And when I have all the permissions set, I can click Save. So that's pretty much it for setting up IAM with LDAP. The only other feature here we haven't really touched on is managing events. And there's more information about events and sessions and all the features that I've shown you in the DevTest documentation. And remember that you can get there by going back to the General tab and clicking Product Documentation. 
So that's a brief introduction to using Identity and Access Manager with LDAP. I hope you found this video useful, and thank you for viewing it.